Well, good morning, Compassion. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here I am. Hello. Good morning. Uh, well, well, Krista was speaking about money uh, a while ago, and I just wanted to share a story really, really quickly with you uh, today before we start. John and I are going to be preaching together today, talking about unforgiveness, and yeah, thank you. And, uh, but I wanted to share a story. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we went to my parents um, for dinner real quickly, and uh, um, my mom said, I have a story that I want to tell you, and she said, she has been keeping, my, my grandma died about probably, I can't even think of the year, 10, 11 years ago. And uh, before that, my grandma had always given us money every Christmas, gave, gave us money, my parents money. That's, that was her way of giving. She would just bless us with money. And just a couple of years before she passed, um, my, she gave my mom a $100 bill. And knowing that my grandma was getting older in years, my mom kept that $100 bill and because she did not know what she wanted to do with it. And um, she didn't want to just spin it on a pair of shoes or, you know, just blow it at a restaurant or whatever. She wanted to actually make, you know, do something special with this $100 bill. So I, I did not have any clue of this, but when we went to my parents for dinner, my mom, 15 years later, still has that $100 bill. 15 years later, and I'm like, well, I would have done spent that thing, right? Um, water bill or something. But anyway, she's kept that uh, $100 bill for 15 years. And she said, when, I, when you, John, were speaking at the beginning of the year about a new heart and a new house, immediately the Lord said to me, that's where I want you to plant it. So she gave me that $100 bill and said, I want you to give this to your church and it be a seed for that new building that you're going to plant over there. Amen. <laughs> I told John, I was like, that's so awesome. I want to just frame it or something and like put it on the wall of the new building. He was like, well, that wouldn't be a seed. And I'm like, well, I guess that's true. But uh, anyway, so I just thought that story was awesome. We have a $100 bill for 15 years. It's going to go over to that building. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hey, guys, don't forget in your seat, we have a prayer card. We're only a few weeks away from Easter, amen? Amen, amen. only a few weeks away. So if you would do me a favor today, write down five friends, five family members, five coworkers, somebody that you know doesn't go to church, isn't saved, and invite them to church. We know on Easter it's the easiest time to get anybody to go to church because they feel like they're going to hell if they don't. So get them here that day, invite them, do whatever it takes, bribe them, blackmail them, do whatever it takes. And if you'll get them here, I'll tell them about Jesus. Amen. And we're going to trust and believe that they're going to give their hearts and lives to Christ. So guys, don't forget, invite someone to our Easter service it's on the shore. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. For our kids are having an egg hunt and a, a treasure hunt and pirate and a whole bunch of stuff going on back in their department. So guys, please do me a favor. Write it down. Friday the 15th, we'll have service that night at 7 o'clock. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have 8.30, 10, 11.30, 1 p.m. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm just excited to be up here today to talk about unforgiveness, and I want to just throw this out there that we're going to be talking a lot about marriage, but even if you are not married in this, in this place today, I know that you can take away some nuggets that we're going to say about unforgiveness, right? Maybe you want to be married in the future. I want you to listen up and think about what we're saying in the future, in your future relationships or any other relationship that you might be in, that a friend or a parent, somebody that you've had to forgive. I want you just to, to listen this morning. It's not not just about marriage, although that's going to be our main topic, but I know that you can get something from, from this sermon today. I want to tell you a story. In 1936, King Edward VIII was going to give an important speech to all of his people over in England. And it was so important that the United States also wanted to broadcast his speech amongst our nation so that they could hear also what he had to say. And so a radio station out of New York City decided that they would be the station that broadcasted his speech throughout our nation. And just minutes before that he was getting ready to give his speech, a person in the radio st station tripped over a wire 
and disconnected all communication throughout the nation. And just seconds before King Edward was to actually start his speech, a very smart engineer thought, this is what I'm going to do. And he got the end. He took one hand and put it on the end of the broken wire and took his other hand and put it on the end of this end of the broken wire. And he, the, the transmission, the broadcast was transmitted through his body. And because of that, he, the, the, the important speech that was given was able to go out. And I think that illustrates so much about the Holy Spirit in marriage, that if you allow him to take one end and take the other end and stand in the middle of your marriage, he can be the transmitter and communication is not easily broken. Amen? If you allow Jesus to be right in the middle and take those things, take those things that are broken and bring him in and let the transmission go through him, communication will be amazing. I want to read this passage out of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. And it says this, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. You, plus your spouse, plus the Holy Spirit, and God can bless your marriage and take care of you if you put your faith and your trust in Him. Let's pray. Lord, we pray today that, Lord, your word would go forth. Every heart and every mind to be open to, to receive, God, what you've got in store. And, Lord, let not one, not one leave this house the same way that they came, but be blessed by your word and by your presence. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And amen. We're going to do our sermon a little bit different today. Uh, a little bit more of a teaching. We're going to talk about forgiveness in marriage. Actually, we're going to talk about uh, some points of how to keep to having problems as far as forgiveness. Then we'll talk about what we do on the back end when we do have to struggle with forgiveness. But it, it'll be a little bit different today. We've got seven points. Don't freak out. I see the fear. <laughs> Randy goes, what? Don't freak out. We'll do it quickly. But today, we want to help you in your marriage to begin to find forgiveness and have a better marriage. Number one is this. Fight fair. Fight fair. Some of you laughing because you know you don't fight fair. And it's sad because, listen, I have seen people treat enemies better than they treat their own spouses. So we have to learn in our marriages to fight fair. If we want to help ourselves in the future when we're going to have to deal with forgiveness, then one thing I want you to do is beforehand always make sure you choose your words wisely. Right. Amen. You can't take them back. Right. You can't take them back. So what we have to do is learn in marriages to choose our words wisely. Right. And I want to say that John and I have been married for 20, almost 28 years. Woohoo! And uh, and I'm and it's not we're not up here because we have a perfect marriage. Amen. Close. <laughs> but we've been through some stuff. We've been through some stuff. And when we first started out in this marriage, we didn't have we did not know how to fight fair. John and I are extreme type A personalities. You know what I'm talking about? I was listening to someone yesterday, and they were talking about that usually in a marriage, there is a domineering person, and then the other spouse is more passive, and it just allows that person to be domineering. I'm like, yeah, that ain't us. No, yeah, no. <laughs> that just ain't us. We are definitely over the top, and we both have type A personalities. Our Enneagrams, anybody know about an Enneagram? We're, it's almost identical. So we're almost like the same person, and we decided to get married. <laughs> but it's good. God has done some amazing things, and we've been blessed throughout these years. But when we first started, we did not know how to fight fair. And we brought up all of the things of the past. And we threw them at one another. And we used words that we should have never used. And, and it caused a lot of turmoil and a lot of brokenness in our marriage. And God has restored all of those things, thank God. But I would just want to put and, and employ you to fight fair. Don't use. You're going to fight, right? You're going to fight no matter what. And even in relationships that you're not married, you're going to fight. But don't bring up those things 
from the past. There's so many things that in my past that I took out on him that he did not deserve because he's not the one that did it to me. I was watching a movie yesterday, Ford versus Ferrari, and there's a scene where Carol Shelby and Ken Miles are out in the front yard and they're, they're fighting. Uh, he comes and Carol Shelby has to apologize to Ken and he's not taking the, the apology very well. And they're out there fighting and about that time, Ken, when he walked up, had a grocery bag in his, in his hand and all the groceries had spilled out on the ground and Ken's up on top of Carol Shelby and Carol Shelby grabs a hold of a can and he looks at it and he's about to hit Ken Miles upside the head and then he goes, he drops it and he picks up a bag of bread and hits Ken over the head with the bread. Now, he's mad at Ken, but he knows that if he does that, it's going to cause more problems. See, we have to learn to fight fair. Choose your words wisely. Another part is, is it's your attitude. Listen, we can have attitudes. Yeah, I mean, we can, that, that's sometimes a problem with marriage is, is your attitude. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. I'm like. You know, you get that little attitude going, and I'm, I'm like, well, you got an attitude, but you got an attitude. I said, but I got an attitude because you had an attitude first, and that's why I got an attitude. Back and, forth. Back and forth. That we've got to learn, listen, to, to, to be proactive so you're not always having to have forgiveness in your marriage. If you learn to fight fair, choose your word words wisely. Only fight about what you're fighting about. Oh, I was just thinking to say, stay on topic. Stay on topic. Yeah. Stay on topic. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight about what happened ten years ago. I can't do anything about it. I'm not gonna fight about what happened two days ago. I'm gonna fight about right now the mistake that I've made. Number two. Don't make everything a code red. Don't make everything a code red. You know what I'm talking about. I, listen. I know one of the things I had to ask forgiveness all the time is taking out the trash. I struggle. I can walk by, and I'm not, not lying. It can be piled this high, and I will walk right. It's like the devil blinds me. It's not my fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, the devil. It yeah. the, de the devil made me do it, yeah. and I will walk right by that trash and not even sit, and I can feel her staring at me <laughs> right in the back of my head. I'll be like, oh, what, what is it? He can't that? see the trash, but he can see my eyes. But I can see yeah. her staring at me. <laughs> Listen, we, we've got to just determine what battles to fight. What battles to fight? Yeah, I think John might have told this story a few weeks ago in this Forgiveness University, but we had a couple that we were counseling back at a church we used to pastor a long time ago, and they were getting divorced. They were done. They were, it was it. They were not going to continue on, and we, John said, well, what happened? What was the start of all this? And they couldn't even remember. They didn't even know, but their pride had gotten a hold of them so much that they were just going to follow through with that divorce instead of try to communicate and figure out what the problem was so they could fix it. But they made it such a code red that they went to the extreme of hurting, of, of getting that divorce, of hurting their children because they weren't willing to figure out what it is that started the whole thing and fix it. You know, sometimes we also realize you married them that way. You knew they were that way before you married them. You know, I, you know, we when I, before we got married, I, you know, I love cars. And the funny thing is, before we got married, she actually acted like she was interested. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Now, she don't give a rip. <laughs> she don't care. I'll be talking about cars. She's like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Snooze. Snooze. <laughs> There are things about your spouse you knew before you got married and why are you trying to change them? Right. That's not a fight worth fighting. Right. Next. Don't make your spouse pay for past relationships. Amen. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday that, that how many of you in here have ever had drama in your marriage or in a relationship? You just had drama. This is what I would say to you. Don't bring the trauma into the drama. Don't bring your trauma of your past relationship, of things that happened to you as a child into your relationship because those things that happened to you, get help over those things. Find a counselor. Get into prayer. Get into the word. Figure out how to deal with those things in your life and find some forgiveness for the things that have happened to you so that you don't take it out on the person who did not do it. 
I'm telling you from experience, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you from experience, I did that. I had things that went on in my life when I was younger, teens, that I, that I was hurt by, things that hurt me, extreme things that hurt me, and I took it out on him, and I brought all of my trauma into our drama, and so I just implore you, don't do that. Don't, don't take it out on the person that didn't do it to you. Amen? If you've got some things, and we all do, past relationships, things that happened when we were children, things that happened when we were teenagers, whatever it may be, I get it. We all have issues. Then get some counseling. Get some help. But don't make your spouse pay for what somebody else did to you. Don't make your spouse, listen, that, that distrust, that disloyalty that you've got in your life, and it's not because of anything your spouse did. It's because of what someone else did, and you didn't forgive them. And look now what it's doing to you today. Well, don't keep putting that on your spouse. They don't deserve it. Get some help. Get, get some counseling. But don't make, listen, all of us are bringing baggage into our marriage. We all are. And we open it wide open and throw all the stuff on our spouse. Don't do that. Don't bring up. And listen, if you know you're dealing with that, then it's time to get some help and get someone to help you. You want to do the next Number four, keep the D word out of the argument. Amen? That's wait, not wait, a, wait, wait. We're not, talking, not, about, we're not talking about the cuss word, okay? <laughs> now keep that out of your argument too. Yeah. But the D word, you know what that is? Divorce. Divorce. Keep that out of the argument. Don't use that. Don't use that as a tool to threaten them. Because one day they might take, the, take you up on that threat, right? Don't use that word. It's hurtful. It's hard. And it, 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 allow, it opens the door to the enemy to come in and allow just a little bit of that to be a part of your marriage. See, what happens is the D word becomes a way out of the argument. When the problem is you need to fix the problem. Yeah. But for some of you, you keep bringing up the D word. Listen, let me tell you this. You made a commitment. I'm, I'm not, listen, hear me when I say this. I'm not bringing judgmentalism on anyone here that you've been married and divorced. Please hear me. I'm not doing that. But I do want you to know now, and hear me when I say this, marriage is not a trial basis. Marriage is forever. And, and you don't keep, keep doing this thing of, well, divorce, divorce, divorce. Listen, first of all, let me say this. The grass is not greener on the other side. Well, I wish you were more like that John Leggett. He's good looking. He got it going on. He, he must work out. Man, he, he, look how he treats Laurie. Honey, if you could just be more like him. I'm sorry. I fell asleep. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying. Fight fair. Fight fair. Don't use the D word. Don't, don't use the D word. And I got so many in my mind right now. Stop doing it. Every time you get in a fight, stop using the D word. It's easy and it's lazy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Finish the fight. Go through the pain. Realize that you're in this forever. You made a commitment between you and God. In fact, it is a covenant that you made between you and God. A covenant that is lifelong. It is forever. You don't say, well, in, I, I'm going to marry, and then if it doesn't work out, no. You broke a covenant with that spouse and a covenant with God. Stop using the D word. Next, how to experience forgiveness in our marriage. Number one, you must talk about the hurt to get over the hurt. You must talk about the hurt to get over the hurt. Now, I know who's most likely to raise their hand. How many, most of you, your spouse, and you just want to walk away and not even talk about it? Okay, I'm shocked. I got more women than I thought. Usually it's the man that that's the way. The men don't want to fuss. They don't want to talk about it. They just want to walk out the door and leave. But how many of you know that if there's a problem, we got to address the problem? And it may hurt, and it may cause problems, I mean issues. It, 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 it may at that moment bring pain up. But we've got to be willing. If we want forgiveness, we've got to talk about the hurt. I think so many times we get so caught up being the victim that we never become the victor. That's good stuff. And God wants you to be victorious, amen? He has already overcome, so therefore you are an overcomer. 
He already finished it on the cross for you. So you have all the, the, the victory that you need is already there. Amen? You just got to take it from him. Let the Holy Spirit be in the middle of it so that you can be victorious. Stop playing the victim. Well, he did this to me or she did this to me. Don't you know what he did? Well, I'm not bitter. I'm just hurt. Well, that's just another word for, for bitter. Yeah. Right? If you're hurt, you got to get beyond the hurt. You got to talk about it. You got to work through the things. You got to got to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and be the transmitter so that communication can be restored. Don't play the victim. Let's be the victor. See, hurt people hurt people until hurt people get help. Let's go. Yeah. Hurt people hurt people until hurt people get help. And in your relationship, some of you aren't dealing with the core problem. You're, not, you're, you're still only dealing with the symptoms, your anger, your, your, your lack of trust, your, your insecurities. But it goes deeper than that. Some of you have got to sit down with your spouse and have an honest conversation and say, this hurts, this causes me problems, but I want you to talk about it. I want us to get beyond it. You can't keep putting your head in the sand and ignoring the problems that are going on in your marriage. You can't do it. You've got to be willing to have those tough conversations. I would say that everybody in here, I feel like if you're going through something and some kind of heartache or pain, you want to be healed. Amen? Amen. You want to be healed. And there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So if you start using your words as, as a healing mechanism instead of a hurting mechanism, you're going to see some change in the relationships that you're in. Amen. So our second and last, this is our last point, right? Yeah. Or, oh, well, excuse me. Second to last. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's a choice. And John and I have been through lots of things in our life that, that we've had to forgive each other for. And some of you may know our story and, and testimony, and some of you may not, and that's okay. But we've been through some things that we've had to get past and we've had to get beyond. And we've had to allow the Lord to heal. And, and it's not necessarily an overnight thing. It's not like a snap of your fingers and you're forgiven, right? Something, sometimes things go a lot deeper. And there's, there's things that have, been, that, that have been so hurtful that sometimes forgiveness is a process. But it's still a choice. It's not always a feeling. I can remember a story... Um, uh, well, it's my own story, but there was a long time ago that I had to forgive someone that hurt me deeply. And I had to get up every single morning, and while I stood in the shower, I said, today I choose to forgive them. And I spoke their name out loud, and I said, Lord, today I choose to forgive them. Today I choose to forgive them. I did that for weeks. For weeks I had to do that, if not months. But eventually... It was like I didn't have to do that anymore because the Lord started healing my heart because there was power in my words. Amen? There's power in your words. Maybe you don't feel like forgiving that person, that person that hurt you and maligned you and mistreated you. You don't feel like forgiving them. But I promise if you do, it's only going to help you. Amen? You know, I love that song, uh, I Speak Jesus. There will be some times that you had to speak Jesus over that situation. Yeah. Lord, I know I had to forgive them. I, Lord, I know I've got to forgive my spouse, but it's hard right now. It hurts right now. But, Lord, right now I just speak Jesus over this situation. I speak forgiveness even when I don't feel it and even when I don't see it yet. I speak forgiveness. Mm -hmm. This almost didn't happen today. Yeah. In fact, I didn't know until this morning that she was going to do this. Sitting at her... Her chair today, getting her makeup on. I finally said, baby, because I'd had to prepare this to do two sermons because something happened last night, and, well, we had to make a decision. Yeah, John and I have done, uh, we've been pastoring now for over 25 years together, and, and uh, yeah, amen. And we've been through a lot of things, and, and uh, we've done a lot of sermon series, and um, it seems like a lot of times when we do sermon series, no matter what the topic is, it's like the Lord is going to allow us to go through 
some kind of, uh, you know, issue so that we can go through it first before we have to, you know, give it to you and he has to preach it to you. So next month we're preaching on when you become a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to change this thing up. We're going to get smarter, you know, the, the more we do this thing. But anyways, but this month on Forgiveness University, man, I'm going to tell you what. And it's not, it's not John and I. We haven't had to do the forgiving because I'm the, I'm the kind of person, like, you can hurt me. You can hurt me all day long. You can just, like, stab me, do whatever you want to do. You can hurt me, and I'll be like, the Lord loves you. It's okay. I forgive you. You know, whatever. It might hurt a little bit, but we'll get through it. I have, a lot, I have a, had a lot of people throughout the church hurt me in life. And most of those people have come back to our church because I killed them with kindness. But you hurt my kids. That a different story. It's just a totally different story when you hurt my children. And so this month, man, the enemy has tried to hurt my children. And it's been hard to forgive those people that have hurt my kids. And I ain't saying I'm through it yet, but anyways, it's a process, right? And I did not want to do this today because I'm like, how am I going to get up there and, and uh, talk about forgiveness and tell you you should forgive and the Lord wants you to forgive and he died on the cross so that you could forgive because he forgives you, right? How am I going to do that when I'm hurt and I'm mad? But it's a choice that I'm having to walk through and decide that Jesus loves everyone. And that no matter what he's done, what, no matter what the enemy has done and brought in, we can forgive and we, can, we have to allow, we have to choose to forgive so that we can let go and not carry hurt with us. Last night, <clears throat> we had, in fact, it's been the last two weeks we found some things out and we had to, have had to, had to deal with it. And it's like last night I found something out, and when I did, it's this point came to my mind. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I don't want to forgive. In fact, Lord, right now, I'm just being honest and being real with you as a pastor. My thought is I want to punch him in the face. I want to punch him in the face. Because as Laurie said, you mess with me, I can handle it. You mess with my kids, I'm not, I don't take it very well. But it's like the Lord spoke to me and said, I didn't give you a choice of who. I chose you to forgive no matter what. And your forgiveness may be the very answer to their salvation. Your forgiveness may be the very answer to the change of their life. Your forgiveness may be the very thing that turns them around. And as I'm thinking last night, because I don't want to get all preachery on her because I'm holding her and she's bawling and she's crying and I'm I'm just I, I, I'm just I shouldn't say the word I'm pissed I'm mad and I'm I, she's crying I'm holding her and, and in my mind all I'm seeing is is retaliation like mm, there's gonna be somebody hurt this week and it's like then I've got this conversation going on in my mind with God going but John but God but God. My son was crucified on a cross. And they pulled out his beard and they put thorns upon his head. And they nailed him to the cross, John. How do you think I felt? But I forgave. But we choose to forgive. You see, it leads to the last thing, and it's this, that consider what your unforgiveness is keeping you from in your marriage. That your unforgiveness is keeping you from joy, peace, excitement. What is your unforgiveness that you've chose to hold on to? What is it keeping you from in your marriage right now? We had to choose, and I mean, she told me last time, we're not doing it. 
She said, I'm not doing it today. I'd already got, I was getting a whole nother sermon. I stayed up late last night. I got a whole nother sermon. In fact, if y'all want to sit here, I'll do it again, the other one. I prepared a whole nother sermon because I just didn't know. And finally this morning we got up. I said, baby, what are you doing? And she said, I, 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 I'm going to do it. Not going to let the enemy win, right? I want you to stand with me. I want to speak Jesus over your marriage. For those that are married, those who will become married, I want to speak Jesus over your marriage. And I want to speak this over your marriage. Forgiveness. Some of you need to go home and tell your spouse, I'm sorry for how, what I've done, how I've treated you. I'm sorry. Some of you need to go home and tell your spouse, I forgive you. They have apologized. They've asked for forgiveness. And you've still held against them. It's time to let it go. It's doing you no good and them no good. So I want you to bow your head close your eyes. If you're here and you're struggling with unforgiveness in a relationship with a marriage or what, any kind of relationship, I want you to raise your hand right now. Yes. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive them, Lord, for holding on to this unforgiveness. Forgive them, Lord, for not letting go of the past or the hurts or the pains. Forgive them, Lord, that, that they have held their future from the glory that you have in store because of the pain that they wouldn't let go. And I pray for blessings over their marriages and their relationships right now in Jesus' name. Here's my second question. Do you know Jesus Christ? Is he the Lord of your life? If you were to die today, do you know with all certainty that you're on your way to heaven? If you don't, then today's the day of salvation. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you would like to invite him into your life, I just want you to slip your hand up right now. Nobody sees you. Amen. 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 I've got three. Give God praise. I want all of you, not just the three that raise their hand, but I want all of you to say this prayer with me. Say it loud. Say it proud right now. Say, Dear Jesus, I invite you to my heart and into my life. Forgive me of all my sins and all my ways. I repent and I come to you and ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life forever and ever. Amen. Give God praise today. Bless you guys. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you here next Sunday.